In the original Killing Us Softly, I said that I would be asking of you something that no one has ever asked before, and that is to take advertising seriously. These days, we do take advertising more seriously. Advertising has increased from a $20 billion a year to a $180 billion a year industry. The average American is exposed to over 3,000 ads every single day and will spend three years of his or her life watching television commercials, just the commercials. The ads, as you know, are everywhere. They're on radio, television, newspapers, magazines, billboards, bumper stickers. Here, one company brags about its ability to put advertising in your face all over the place. And at the same time, everyone in America still feels personally exempt from the influence of advertising. So wherever I go, what I hear more than anything else is, I don't pay attention to ads, I just tune them out. They have no effect on me. Now, I hear this most often from people wearing Gap t-shirts, but that's another story. <laughs> It certainly is true, in fact, it's more true than ever, that advertising is the foundation of the mass media. The primary purpose of the mass media is to sell products. Advertising does sell products, of course, but it also sells a great deal more than products. It sells values, it sells images, it sells concepts of love and sexuality, of romance, of success, and perhaps most important, of normalcy. To a great extent, advertising tells us who we are and who we should be. What does advertising tell us today about women? It tells us, just as it did 10 and 20 and 30 years ago, that what's most important about women is how we look. The first thing the advertisers do is surround us with the image of ideal female beauty. So we all learn how important it is for a woman to be beautiful and exactly what it takes. Women learn from a very early age that we must spend enormous amounts of time, energy, and above all, money, striving to achieve this ideal and feeling ashamed and guilty when we fail. And failure is inevitable because the ideal is based on absolute flawlessness. She never has any lines or wrinkles. She certainly has no scars or blemishes. Indeed, she has no pores. <laughs> Women's bodies continue to be dismembered in advertising. Over and over again, just one part of the body is used to sell products, which is, of course, the most dehumanizing thing you can do to someone. Not only is she a thing, but just one part of that thing is focused on. Most often, the focus is on breasts, since we are a culture that is certainly obsessed with breasts. And breasts are used to sell absolutely everything. The most dependable fishing line in the world. <laughs> Women are constantly told we must change our lives by increasing our breast size, and the stakes are high. Does your husband wish you had larger breasts? And if he does, the implication is very clear. You better change your body as opposed to changing your husband. <laughs> Basically, we're told that women are acceptable only if we're young, thin, white, beautiful, carefully groomed and polished, and any deviation from that ideal is met with a lot of contempt and hostility. You never thought you'd lose your looks, either. And look at the kind of real contempt that there is for this woman who's portrayed as completely valueless now. These days, the greatest contempt is for women who are considered in the least bit overweight, as in this classic, I'd probably never be married now if I hadn't lost 49 pounds, which one woman told me was the best advertisement for fat she'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the primary message that young women and girls get in our culture today is the message in this ad. At the top, it says, the more you subtract, the more you add. What a horrible message. The more you subtract, the more you add. At least one in five young women in America today has an eating disorder, the most common of which are anorexia and bulimia. And if you think of an eating disorder as any kind of disordered attitude towards eating and one's appetite, it's probably closer to four out of five. Now, where else could this image of thinness come from, if not at least in part, from the media images that surround us and that tell us in order to be acceptable, we need to be painfully, unnaturally thin. Oh. 
No wonder we have the highest rate of teen pregnancy in the developed world. In general, teenagers are hypersexualized in our culture today. Here, a young woman, very young, very thin, walking down the street, envisioning herself in black lace. A magazine for young women and girls called Jane has on the cover an article, 15 Ways Sex Makes You Prettier. There continue to be lots of ads that normalize and trivialize battering. And battering is the single greatest cause of injury to women in America. Imagine an ad like this for the woman being shot. Trivializing copy like this, great hair never dies. Advertising is one powerful force that keeps us trapped in very rigid roles and in very crippling definitions of femininity and masculinity. We need to get involved in whatever way moves us to change not just the ads, but these attitudes that run so deep in our culture and that affect each one of us so deeply, whether we're conscious of it or not. Because what's at stake for all of us, men and women, boys and girls, is our ability to have authentic and freely chosen lives, nothing less.